What's going on YouTube? Thanks for stopping by. My name is Michael, also known as Hyrule Dude. Today we're going to be going over part one of the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom walkthrough. And this is going to be the best way to complete the Great Sky Island, and you're going to be fully prepared to take on the surface. So let's go ahead and skydive off of this ledge here and get the game started. Wow, how awesome is that? So I'm gonna go ahead and press R to accelerate down into this lake here and dive in. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Looks like a great, beautiful fall day here in Hyrule. I'm gonna go ahead and swim over to this lily pad and just take a look around and take it all in. This is the beginning of an epic adventure, highly anticipated game, and right from the jump, it is looking really, really good, as expected. Nintendo never fails with their artwork. So um, let me go ahead and run down here. First thing we're gonna wanna do is start equipping Link. So I'm gonna find a few of the tree branches in the area and collect those so we can use those for now as our weapon. All right, we've got another tree branch here. And let me go ahead and get this sky shroom here. Okay, cool. Now there's a few more sky shrooms and branches right here in the immediate area. So I'm gonna go ahead and collect those. And we've got a red apple here. And if you notice, there's a soldier construct right there waiting for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and take him out really quick. Ideally, the way you want to take him out is use your flurry rush. So the way you do that is you backflip at the exact right time and it's going to engage a slow motion where you can unleash a bunch of strikes to take out your enemy. So he dropped a soldier construct horn and also a zonai charge. These are going to be very, very important throughout Tears of the Kingdom. So you're always going to want to collect as many as you can. This big tree right here, this one has a few eggs at the top of it. These are really good because first off, eating just one is gonna replenish one heart, but if you cook it, it's gonna replenish two hearts. So they're a very potent ingredient to start gathering right there at the beginning of the game. Let's see what's in this hut here. So we've got a wooden stick. And so from here, I'm basically just gonna go down the path and see what lies ahead. Got another Sky Shroom here. What do we have over here? Let's see. Okay, we've got a tree branch. So let me go ahead and collect that and some more Sky Shrooms. We're gonna actually want to talk to this gentleman right here. This is a steward construct. They always reveal a lot of good information. It's good to learn from them, especially at this point in the game. So let's go ahead and talk to him and see what he has to say. All right, so he's saying he's waited for me and that Princess Zelda left something for me in his care. So let's see what it is. Okay, it looks like a Sheikah Slate, but it's actually a Pura Pad. So it looks identical to a Nintendo Switch, which is really cool that they would implement the design of the Switch into the Pura Pad and the Sheikah Slate. But this is a very important piece of equipment that you're gonna be using throughout the game. And you're gonna be able to check your locations on the maps. You're gonna be able to check your inventory and do some transporting between different locations as well. Now he's telling me that his records indicate that Princess Zelda is located at the marker on the map. So he's pointing across the way to this location, which is the Temple of Time. So that's gonna be the first place that we're gonna need to get to. 
So let me go ahead and activate this Zonai pedestal, and we're gonna make our way to complete our first main quest, which is find Princess Zelda. All right, activating this pedestal, and that's gonna go ahead and create a bridge for us to cross over. All right, let's see what's over here. Might as well just go ahead and take whatever I can before we jump off of this platform here. Here we have a dead construct. It's gonna give me a Zonai charge, and there's this little hut over here again. So let me go in there and see what we can scavenge. All right, we've got the steward construct telling us a few things here. He's uh, basically letting us know to watch out for some of the constructs here. Some of them are foes. And then he's giving us some basic fighting tips here. So now we're ready to go ahead and jump off this ledge down to the next section of the Great Sky Island. Cool. And I was able to catch a hot-footed frog. Those are gonna be really good for making elixirs. Let me get a second one, and then I'll swim over to the nearest lily pad. So let me get on here. Okay, that was a close one. going to go ahead and continue making my way towards that marker on the map. Might as well take out this construct here and continue collecting as many parts as I can. Cool, he's done. Two more constructs in the way, ladies and gentlemen. There's actually a boulder above this rock wall that you could use to throw down on him, uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and take him out really quick. third one that just popped up out of nowhere. I didn't even realize it. Oh, he got me. He's going to have to pay for that. Alright, got him. Let me make sure to get all the parts here and not leave anything behind. All right, I think I got all the parts here. We've got another steward construct here. He's got a toasty sky shroom sitting right here. So let me take that. And he's kind enough to just go ahead and give it to me. He's also gonna give me a little bit of cooking tips that we can basically roast some food on a fire. Now, I don't really see myself ever needing to roast my food. But uh, let's go ahead and just roast something really quick. So I'm going to go ahead and roast these sky shrooms by just simply throwing them right on top of the fire. Now you're going to sit there and it's going to eventually make a little poof there. And you'll notice that it's been cooked. We've got some toasty sky shrooms there. Let's swim across this water and make our way to the Temple of Time. See what's going on over here. This dude's got a shield and a sword, so I'm definitely going to want to take this guy out. All right, so we've got the old wooden shield. And the rusty broadsword. The 
example of time. Time to examine this door now. That door will open only to those with sufficient power. Who's this guy? I'm sorry. I did not intend to startle you. It was I that spoke to you earlier. That arm originally belonged to me. I am Raru. Raru. Source of the right arm. Forgive me for appearing to you in this manner. Unfortunately, I no longer have a physical form. <laughs> Link looks all sad. In any case, that arm should allow you to open this door. It seems to have lost the power to do so. You might be able to restore it, but you would need to enter a place filled with sacred light. Ah, of course. Why not visit the shrines on this island? The shrines. Yes, I am sure they are the key. Raru is the man. He's such a well-spoken dude. Alright, so now we've got a new main quest, which is going to be the closed door. So, as Raru had mentioned, we're going to have to go to the three shrines on the island and complete them. So, I'm going to go ahead and put a pin on this one here. It's literally right there in front of you. Um, there's another one here towards the left. And then there's another one out in this area here. So let me just go ahead and put a marker here. These are gonna be the three locations that we are gonna be heading to to activate these shrines. So of course we're gonna start with the one that's closest to us, which is gonna be the one right here towards the west. All right, gonna take this dude out because he's got a bow. Smash this guy's face in, grab the bow, and keep him moving. I don't really have to technically take this dude out, but I do want those parts. I want that soldier horn right there. Alright, so let's make our way up this broken staircase here. So this is the Yuko Shrine, Shrine number one of the Great Sky Island. Let's go ahead and enter this and see what lies in store for us. Now these shrines in Tears of the Kingdom are just so much cooler than they were in Breath of the Wild in my opinion. I mean, Breath of the Wild was awesome in terms of the shrines too, but it's just a lot more involved and clever in Tears of the Kingdom. So let me go ahead and get in here and see what this is all about, what the new shrines are. And there's Raru again. Ah. This is a shrine of light. Long ago, I filled these places with light that purges evil. I believe this light will restore an ability your right arm has lost. Now then, extend your hand. <gasps> Alright, what's happening to my hand here? Not 
nice we've got the ultra hand so uh this is going to allow us to manipulate objects really anywhere uh in the game so this is pretty much like your magnesis if you will mm. so we're going to use the ultra hand to receive the blessing from this shrine all right to activate this we'll just press l um, so let's run down. We're going to see this like little chasm here. So we're going to use this slab to make our way across. But when using Ultra Hand, it's a little tricky at first, but really you could do anything with it. I mean, turn it in any direction, literally any angle like that. And so the easiest way to get it back to level is to make it align with you and then turn it in a way to where it faces you and then you'll be able to make a level again. And that was literally our first puzzle there that we solved, so that's cool. This one here, we're gonna wanna attach two of them together. So if you put them right next to each other and then you glue them, then uh, they'll connect. All right, put this over here. In the right hand corner, you're gonna see that there's a treasure chest. So we'll use this very same ramp that we just created and we'll use it to get up there and collect that chest. All right, let's see what it has. I'm going to guess arrows. I'm going to guess arrows. It's an amber. Okay, sweet. That's good to have for abilities we haven't attained yet. So let's go ahead and use the Ultra Hand on this wooden platform here. We'll take this hook and glue this thing right on and go down the rail towards the altar. It's a new game, new altar for the shrines. So we've received our light blessing and we've got this little red glow on our arm. So it kind of feels like I'm healing my arm or something a little bit. Now we've got two more shrines to activate after this one. And of course with shrines, just like in Breath of the Wild, you can give the blessings that you receive to the goddess statue and increase things like your stamina and your hearts. So that's something to always keep in mind because it's important to complete as many as you can. All right, so Raru's outside, and he's letting us know that we should basically mark the shrines in the distance there. Mm. As we did before, you'll activate the scope just by pressing in on the right joystick. So we've got this marker here already on the second shrine we're going to. Let's make our way that way. I'm going to do that by just jumping off of this ledge here. And we're going to go ahead and ride the rail down to the island nearby. Now, right here in this area, there's a convenient bunch of arrows for you to just take. 
Uh, so make sure to grab those because we're pretty low on resources at the moment. And we'll go up to the top of this section here. And we're basically just going to rebuild what we just built in the shrine. So we're going to take a hook, attach it to the wooden platform, and we're going to go ahead and ride down this rail here. Look at that sunset. That is stunning. Bravo, Nintendo. I mean, Breath of the Wild had amazing sunsets. I feel like they're slightly different. There's some slightly different kinds of sunsets in Tears of the Kingdom, and it's just phenomenal work. So now that we're here at the island, I'm going to go ahead and just crouch and capture a couple of these sunset fireflies here. There's also a axe right here lodged into this stump. So I'm going to go ahead and take that. And there's another one across the way. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that one too. Got some free wood over here. And let's go ahead and grab this. Zone I charge from this dead construct. And it's getting late, so I'm going to go ahead and actually spend the night here next to my buddy Raru and this construct here. So I'm going to go ahead and sleep until morning here. Alright, bright and early, 5 a.m. You know, you can't be sleeping in, so. Uh, let's go ahead and use our Ultra Hand and connect these two logs together. We're going to need to make it as like a bridge to just close this gap here. Alright, cool. You'll see in the distance there's a fire right there with another construct there. But right in this pond, there's this rock in the center. Uh, this is going to have a Korok seed. So let's go ahead and capture that. Koroks are going to be very important. Just like in Breath of the Wild, you're going to be able to use them to upgrade your inventory slots. To carry more weapons, more bows, more shields. So this is another very critical component of your gameplay in Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> this like ostrich right here so let me go ahead and hit him in the head with an arrow let's go ahead and collect the raw meat that he drops sweet all right jump back into the water here Alright, let's see what's over here by that campfire. Got some wooden boxes here, so let's go ahead and scavenge more. Bundle of five arrows, so that's good. Let's see if we can hit this dude in the head from here. Right in the beak, man. That's sweet. So let's go ahead and jump across this water and continue making our way towards the yellow marker on our map. Got this cooking pot here, so I might as well take advantage of it. Let me cook up some meats, some sky shrooms, and just make them more potent. Since it's 7.25 in the morning, I feel like I'm going to want an omelet. So let me go ahead and cook this egg here. Yum. Alright, so more crates. Grab these arrows. Another dead construct here with more zone eye charges. Now these are going to be, again, very critical throughout the game. So collect as many as you can. Mm. 
Another ostrich. Yeah, these birds are having a really tough day today. All right, so we've got this little clan of soldier constructs. Might as well take them out because they got some weapons here that I want to collect, like that bow. There's a shield over there. There's a nice little chest with purple eyes, so I want to get that too. All right, so we took those dudes out pretty quick. Grab the rusty shield. We're going to want that. Oh, this dude was trying to do a sneak attack. I just messed up. We've got this dude up here. This dude was late to the game, man. He just let me take all his friends out. He didn't even care, man. <laughs> he was like, dude, I'm chilling, man. It's too early for this. <laughs> all right, cool. Let me uh, make sure I pick everything up, including this rusty sword here. You know what? I changed my mind. I want the stupid stick. I'm going to drop off a branch instead. We've got an opal. That's something we could definitely use as well. All right, this area has been officially cleared. So you'll see this huge lake right here. Um, we're gonna wanna go ahead across that. So let's dive in below. So we'll make a raft to uh, get across. Some choo-choos right here. All right, instead I'm just gonna hit him in the eye with an arrow. Might as well. When all else fails, just hit him in the eye with an arrow. So let's go ahead and collect these choo-choo droppings here and continue with the mission here, which is to make this raft. So let's go ahead and glue these two logs together and then we're gonna put a sail on it as well. And it's gonna get us across this. All right, let's grab our raft that we just created and we'll make our way across this lake here. Super slowly, it's like snail's pace on this one. Maybe it's the wind, maybe it's my raft construction. I'm not sure, but we are gonna make our way. All right, at this point I could swim faster than this. So let me just jump off here and uh, head up here. So if we go to the left, there's gonna be a staircase right here. That's gonna be leading up right into the second shrine that we need to take care of. This is gonna be shrine number two out of three. It's the In Isa Shrine. So let me go ahead and activate this and gain access. All right, let's see if Raru pops up again. All right, and there he is. Oh. What's this gonna be? Nice, so we've got the Fuse ability. This is a very, very cool ability. It allows you to basically attach objects to your weapons, to your shields, and even to your arrows. 
Mm. Um, so it's going to be a frequently used ability, and it's actually my favorite ability of Tears of the Kingdom. So um, let's run down these steps. You're going to see that there's a rusty claymore right here. So I'm going to drop one of my tree branches, grab this rusty claymore, and then I'm going to use our newly acquired fuse ability to fuse this boulder to it. And so now we have a boulder hammer. It's going to allow us to just take down this destructible wall in one swing. And once we run up these stairs, we'll notice that there's a pillar with a chest on top of it. But she's going to have some arrows in it. And that indeed is what it is. So we'll take it. So from here, let's go into the other room down this hallway. And we're going to see there's a bunch of trees. These are fire fruit trees here. And the fire fruits are a very, very cool item that you can use to start fires. Uh, you can either throw them on things. You can attach them to arrows and fire them off. It's going to be something that you're going to be using a lot. And then we're going to see that there's a bow and a bundle of arrows here conveniently here for us to solve how to get this treasure chest here. So we're going to attach a fire fruit to our arrow and then hit the leaves around this treasure chest. And then it's going to fall down, making it accessible to us. All right, so we've got a small key. We're going to need that to get through the door here on the right hand side. All right, so heading up this ladder, let's see what's in this room waiting for us. So it looks like a captain construct here is waiting to do battle with us. So I noticed there's a bunch of leaves obviously right around them. So I'm going to use my fire fruit to light those up and let's just burn this construct to the ground, man. All right, I don't think this guy likes being on fire too much, so let's hit him with one more fire arrow. So we got him out. Let me go ahead and replenish my health here. It's a Captain Construct Horn that he dropped. That's a really good item to fuse to some of your more powerful weapons. Let me drop my wooden stick here and grab this rock hammer. And we're pretty much good to go. But before we leave, we want to make one more fuse. So if I climb this ladder here, there's going to be two weapons. I'm going to grab the long stick. And I'm actually going to go ahead and attach one of these spikes to it. So now we've got a spiky spear. And on the other side, there's some extra fire fruits might as well grab them while we're here and then make our way to the altar Nice, so we've got our second Light of Blessing. We've got one more shrine after this, and then we can head towards the closed door and try to get that thing open, man. So we've got a steward construct here telling us that he forgot to give us something. What the heck, man? What if I needed that? That's cool, better late than never. So we've got an energy cell. So this is going to allow us to power our Zonai devices. Uh, we can actually increase it in the game. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing too. So uh, he's telling us that we can learn more about it from some of his buddies across the way. So of course, we're going to be heading that way as well. But before we do that, let's take down this destructible wall and get this chest that's inside.
All right, so now's a perfect opportunity to fuse a few things. So let me go ahead and equip my wooden stick. And then I'm going to take a soldier construct horn. I'm going to hold it and I'm going to drop it on the ground. And from there, I'm going to go ahead and fuse that to my stick. So this is going to actually make a soldier reaper. Now it's going to make fighting constructs a lot easier. It's going to take less hits to take them out. So let's put that to the test on the first construct we see. And there he is, Mr. Unlucky. So let's see how quickly this takes him out. So that's basically two or three hits and he's done. Not bad, not bad. All right, we've got this couple of constructs here that are not paying attention. They're not too smart. So I'm going to go ahead and do a couple critical hits and take them out. These choo-choo's are just screaming for a spiky spear. So let me go ahead and serve that up. For them. All right, moving forward. We see a cave ahead, which is our next destination, and we'll do the same thing with this construct. Let's let's hit him with a critical hit. Nice. All right, so we've got these two dudes who spotted me out of nowhere. Uh, I was trying to avoid them, but that was not a possibility for me. So I'm gonna have to take them out. Anyway. Dang it, I keep backflipping too early or too late. Let's try it on this dude. Okay, got him. I want that construct horn. Going down. All right, demolish. So now that we've taken out those constructs, we might as well go across the way and get this treasure chest here as well. Nice, so this has a soldier reaper. I'm just gonna go ahead and drop my old one for the new one and uh, just get myself a fresh one. Might as well also camp here for the night until morning. Grab these ancient arowana fish and make our way inside of the pond side cave here. All right, so we've got some new items here. We've got the Bright Bloom Seed. That is a very useful plant where you could illuminate dark spaces at any point. You could just throw them and light your path. So uh, let me take out these keys. First keys of the game, aside from when we were under Hyrule with Zelda. Um, this is another really cool thing. We can really utilize the Keese Eyeball for more than just like elixirs, right? Now we can actually use them to as a fighting weapon. Break this four. Got a flint. We've got an amber. So I'm going to go ahead and fuse one of my ambers to my rusty broadsword. Here we've got a bubble frog. So this is where I'm going to go ahead and attach one of my keys eyeballs to my arrow. And what that's going to do is going to actually home in on the target, which is just so sweet, right? So we'll basically guaranteed a shot on him. All right, and we'll grab this bubble gem and more of the bright bloom seeds. Now, before we leave this room, there's a bunch of indestructible rocks. There's also some ores behind them that we're going to want to collect before we leave. Where the heck did this keys come from? I thought I got them all. All right, I'm going to use my decayed master sword just so I don't weaken any of my other weapons. Rogue keys. Let me go ahead and get this guy too. Look at these nice ores. And this one's a good one on the 
nice so we've got a red ruby here on the floor so let's go ahead and fuse that to a weapon and make an elemental fire weapon nice let's go ahead and demonstrate the power of this item here check this out how cool is that way better than super mario brothers fireball all right, so let's go ahead and just clear this out here and continue through the cave. Before we leave this cave, there's a treasure chest here containing another piece of clothing. So we're gonna wanna grab that. That's gonna give us the archaic tunic. Let me go ahead and equip that so Link is now fully clothed and I hope he feels a lot better. All right, so don't forget to grab these bright blooms here. Here, we're gonna have to actually cross this lake. Before we do that, let's go ahead and scavenge some of the goodies here from these crates. All right, so we've got a bundle of arrows here. Not bad. Now, take my Ultra Hand and basically glue three logs together. Right from there, we'll be able to take two of these fans, put them on the end of this raft, and then we can make our way across this lake. All right, Let's put this in the water. Whoa, totally missed it. Tried to jump on it, totally missed it, but it's okay. So let me use my Decayed Master Steward instead to activate these. And we are cruising along. All systems go. Damn bulbs, love those additions to the Tears of the Kingdom. Let me see if this is a Korok under here. I don't think it is. Okay, it's not. Let's just walk all the way up these steps and basically see where it takes us. We're going to go right to the top of this mountain here. Uh, there's going to be another cave that we need to go through uh, at the top there. I'm going to go ahead and climb up this tree because it has a few bird eggs that I want to get. Alright, so this is the mining cave. This is where it's going to get pretty dark in here. And we can finally put these bright bloom seeds to use. So let me go ahead and grab one and just throw it. And as you can see, it illuminates the way super clear. So you're going to want to collect as many Bright Blooms as you can because there's so many caves throughout Tears of the Kingdom. There's other options too that will help you illuminate dark areas uh, such as different recipes that will give you glow effects or pieces of armor. Got this mining construct giving me some instructions on the Bright Blooms. Um, but we already know how to use them. So let's keep it moving here and continue lighting up the way. So we're going to see a bunch of ores too along this way that we're going to want to break and collect the stones that they drop. like this ore right here. So this is a very special ore. Uh, you're gonna find them in many caves. Zonite stones are gonna be very important for processing. So always be on the lookout for them. Yeah. 
Got some more over here. Gonna throw this weapon because it's weak, and I'm just gonna fuse a new weapon together really quick. It's not a big boulder one, but it's all right. It'll still do the trick. Now this part of the cave is super dark, so let's light it up for these folks in here. That must be horrible working conditions. I'm sure they're really gonna appreciate the added light. There's a bunch of more zonite ores, so let's get at those. There's even more over here. And we've got our construct friend here trying to break an ore, so let's go ahead and help him out. Thanks, dude. See you later. <laughs> He's probably so mad. He was like, I've been working to get that for so long. All right, so these are some capsules here. So let's take a look at them. Let's try to take them. But the mining construct is telling us he didn't give us permission to take them. Fortunately, he's kind enough to actually just give us them. So we've got three fans at this point. These are all in capsules. So we could deploy them really at any point that we need to, which we're actually going to do right now. So I'm going to take this fan and drop it on the floor and then just glue it to this mining cart so that we can get to the top of this other section of the island. All right, take out my master sword and let's get going. Sweet, so this is our first device dispenser that we're encountering right here. So um, let me go ahead and break these crates as usual. Definitely wanna keep increasing my inventory, but this device dispenser is very, very cool. They're actually spread out throughout Hyrule. And what you do is you're gonna take some of your Zonai parts, like your Zonai charges or your soldier construct horns, and you're gonna throw them in and it's actually gonna make some devices for you. So let's see what we get here when we throw this in. All right, so we've got a flame emitter. Uh, we've got a portable pot. Looks like we've got some fans. So I'm actually gonna go for round two on that. See what we get the second round. All right, sweet. Doesn't look like we got anything new, but we did increase what we have is we have seven portable pots. We have six flame emitters and 11 fans. Let me take out a flame emitter. I'm going to go ahead and fuse this right here to a rusty broadsword and let's see how this is going to work. All right, cool. So let me go ahead and take a swing, show you how that works. How awesome is that? So you could always use that for a quick updraft if you need uh, as well on the go. Uh, let me take out another flame emitter and this one I'm just going to go ahead and fuse to my shield and it's going to basically work in the same manner. Once you take it out, you're going to start firing off some fire and this is what I look like fully equipped with the dual flame emitter setup, which is pretty, pretty bad. So there's this little Korok dude over here needing some help. His friend is along the way. You can't reach him. I'm going to grab the minecart that I originally used to get up here. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this onto the rail. I'm going to grab our little friend here, Mr. Korok. Throw him in the minecart and we are going to roll out.
And let me do a quick jump and wow, Link was not wearing his seatbelt on that one for sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this Korok and bring him over to his buddy. But the way you gotta do it, he's gotta raise him up really high and drop him on his head. It's the best way, they love that actually. Reunited at last, thanks. I'd like to give you something, but here's all I have. And then he gives me two Korok seeds. All right, same thing as before. We're gonna use the mining cart that we have. We're gonna throw a hook on it and we're gonna throw it onto that rail right there. Got it on. Let's, uh, let's go for a ride. We've got the third shrine in sight. We are almost there. Let's see what's under this hut really quick. I'm gonna grab these Zonai charges from these decayed constructs. And let's check this chest really quick. Portable pot. Okay, that's legit. I'm down with that. Appreciate it. Now, if we look down, there's a body of water there that we could dive into. So, let me just jump off here. Oh, don't want to climb down. I want to just jump down. We just went full circle, basically, here. Um, to the right, you're going to see this cave. So, let's go through the cave. And there's actually some spicy peppers on the outside that I missed. But uh, you can always grab those as well. There's also some spicy peppers inside. So I'm going to grab these. Now let me go ahead and cook these up. We're going to need to do this because we're going to encounter some super cold weather in just a few moments. And this dish is going to keep us warm by giving us cold resistance for seven minutes. And then also there's this rock wall right here that we can break. And when we go in... There's a nice stash of bright bloom seeds. There's a giant bloom seed in there too. And a nice ore. All right, making our way through this cave here. All right, I'm not going to want to use this flame emitter in this small little area. So, back to my decayed master sword for these little key bats. All right, and once we head outside, it's going to get super cold. All right, so let me go ahead and eat this meal before we head out. And now we have the cold resistance. I'm gonna grab these spicy peppers. And we've got our first white choo-choo jelly. So the choo-choo jelly that he drops is gonna be the ice jelly. So you can always fuse this to the end of your arrows and it's going to freeze your opponent. I'm gonna go ahead and just take out my soldier reaper and take out these constructs. Let me use my flame emitter on this dude. Burn him up. Burn two, man. All right. How cool is that? That is so dope. All right, sweet. Grab my parts up, break these boxes, of course, and get what's ever inside. So I'm going to destroy the fuse material here. Um, the reason why is because I'm going to hit this icicle with an arrow and fuse that instead. And now we've got an icicle spear, which is a great fuse. 
I'm gonna go ahead and light a fire here because I wanna make it daytime again. It's getting kind of late and I wanna make sure Link is rest up for the trials ahead. So stay here till morning. All right, moving forward here. So if you use your flame emitter on these white choo-choos, they'll immediately die. Just like that. Now we've got these choo-choo jellies fighting with the captain construct. So let's let them do their thing. And while they freeze them, I'm gonna go ahead and throw some added hits in there too. Cool, so they basically took them out for me. Appreciate it. Now let me burn you guys. <laughs> Thanks for the help, man. Sweet. Let me drop this stone axe and get the uh, weapon he dropped. Now, another trick you could do that I forgot to mention before um, is if you fused the ruby to the broadsword, then you could just throw that on your back and it's going to give you cold resistance too. All right, third cave here. This is the last one that we need to visit. All right, let me just attach this piece eyeball to hit this dude really quick. All right, got him. Grab my seeds. And we've got some bomb flowers here growing. So, always want to collect those. Bubble gem, let's go. Let's see what this ore deposit reveals. Oh, nothing. Oh, some amber. Sweet. So, this leg like here is pretty easy to beat. I'm just going to use my flame emitter club and burn him so he could reveal his weak point hit it with an arrow and then just take him out. Pull out my Amber Reaper. All right, one more strike, he's done. Cool. He dropped an opal. Sweet. So this tree here, we're going to definitely want to climb up and collect more of the bomb flowers there. Nice. And this is something you don't want to do. You don't want to just jump down. You're going to want to climb down like a responsible human being. Um, because I almost got wiped out there. So let me replenish that and continue my way through the cave. All right. Almost missed this like like here. Uh, same deal here. I'm going to go ahead and wait for him to open up, hit his vulnerable spot, and take him out. Just like that. Alright, we've got a chest that falls out. Let's see what this has in it. I bet you it's another opal. Yes, it's another opal. And this one here is a chest definitely worth getting. It's gonna give me a flame emitter there. Now, before we leave, we're gonna wanna grab this flame emitter shield that's just sitting right here, ready for us. And gonna head out so we can get into this next shrine, which is right above us. All right, so we're going to actually climb the roots of this tree right here. So 
so right around the bend, we are at the Gutenbach Shrine. Let's go ahead and enter this and get our blessings so that we can finally open the closed door. What's this ability? Let's see. I wonder what it is. All right, so we've got the Ascend ability. It's gonna let us go through solid services and basically have the ability to walk through ceilings, if you will. We can't walk through doors, but we can certainly go through ceilings. So let's use that right here. Looks like my cold resistance is about to end. But that's all right, because we've got our ruby sword on our back. So we've got these two columns here. I'm going to go up the left one first to get the contents of this treasure chest and then we'll go through the one on the right. A stone axe. All right, not bad. All right, so on top of this second column here, another construct. Let me use my ruby sword on this guy. He's done with two strikes. I'm going to take an arrow to cut these ropes here. Alright, so that slab fell. And of course, we're going to use our new ability here to get through to the top. It's a very important mechanic to get used to here. So let's ascend through this moving platform here. And then right through to the top. So we're at the top, gonna get my Light of Blessing. And we're gonna make our way back to the Temple of Time. And there is Raro. Mm. All right, he just used the word should. I hope that's not a bad sign here. But uh, if you'll notice to the right, there is this ledge here. You're going to want to ascend through it for sure. Let me look down here. There's some crates here. Am I good on arrows? I'm good on arrows. Okay. Ascending through this stone here. And once we go through, we're going to see this treasure chest here. This is going to contain the archaic warm greaves. So that would keep us nice and toasty too. We're not going to need to use it because we have the ruby sword on our back. As you can see, we have no cold resistance and we're doing just fine. So... And there's another device dispenser. So let's check it out. Let's see if we can get something new from this one. We've got a wing here too. So actually, I'm going to go ahead and fuse that to my rusty shield. And that's going to give me a higher jump uh, whenever I use it. So let me go ahead and take my five 
Zonite charges and throw it in, see if we get something new. Alright, so we do have a few new things here. We have the wing. So we now have some wings in our collection. I should probably do it again as usual. Maybe collect a few more wings. And then we'll see what we have. Now we have 16 fans, 11 flame emitters, 10 portable pots, and 8 wings. Alright, so heading down these steps here, we're going to see these two wings here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab one, and I'm going to put a fan on it, because we're going to use this vehicle to get us to the Temple of Time. We're going to fly there. So let me take out a fan and glue it to the tail of this wing. Let's throw that here. Now, once I take my sword off, it's going to get freezing. So I'm going to just take the decayed master sword, hit this fan, and let's get moving. And check this out. We are now flying on the wing. How amazing is that? Just imagine all the possibilities coming up further on in the game. So you'll see like a little battery there. That's going to be when the Zonai device runs out of energy. So once that's depleted, you're pretty much on your own. The device also will time out. So let's go in for a landing right in front of this door. All right, we're coming in hot. Abort mission. Okay. Okay. We made it. We made it. Let's open this door here. Sweet. We are in. Closed door complete. What is this? Let's go ahead and let's grab this thing here. It's like a dreamlike state. And there's Zelda. Here in the Temple of Time. So she's giving me a new ability. Fourth ability comes directly from Zelda herself. And this is going to be the recall ability. Alright, so we've got the recall, our fourth ability. There's still two more abilities after this, though. Um, but that's going to come later on in the game. 
So Raru is here. We are going to try to open the door in the back of the Temple of Time. He's pretty confused about what just happened too. He thinks it's a mystery, but obviously I have the recall ability for a reason. So um, let me go ahead and recall these gears here and use them to get to the upper level of the Temple of Time. All right, we're gonna do the same thing on this gear here. Once it's down a little bit lower. Talking to this goddess statue here now is gonna be pointless. So let's just go to the door and try to open it. Come on, Link, we're losing some hearts here. What the heck? The door tests your overall vitality. Okay. There's one more shrine on this island. Then I can get through the door. Wow. Wish he would have told me that at first. So once we get that other blessing, we can go here to this goddess statue and trade him in. So... He wants to check out my Pura pad, so I guess I'm cool with that. Here, man. So now we can actually travel to places instantly, which is just like Breath of the Wild. We're going to transport over to the Room of Awakening because that's where that marker is there. So taking out the map. And headed to the Room of Awakening now. Alright, so you'll see these gears, the same one that we saw in the Temple of Time, also here. Um, there's a ledge here that we're going to ascend through. And then we'll recall those gears to get to the other side of this room. Alright, let me recall this one too. I feel like there's going to be a keys bat here somewhere but there's not so we are good to go and here we are upon the final shrine of this walkthrough this is the Nikoya shrine and something tells me we're gonna have to use our recall ability on this one too <laughs> but let's see all right so this is called the ability to rewind all right, so let me recall this raft. Go upstream. And we're going to do that to this second raft as well. That falls down here. And this is going to take us right back up where this raft came from. How cool is that, man? Alright, let's do the same thing to this gear. Let's see what's in here. Bundle of 10 arrows. Okay, that's decent. Little 10 piece McNugget on that one. Alright, so we're going to put recall on these two hands here once they're aligned. Uh, because once they're aligned, then they're going to actually open. Time to get this blessing and open this door, man.
that is the fourth lighted blessing that we have now. All right, so outside of the Room of Awakening here, there's going to be a steward construct who is running this crystal refinery. This is where you could take your crystallized charges and use them to produce more energy wells. Um, so we don't have enough now, so I just wanted to show this to you because it is right here in front of this shrine that we can always transport to. Now let's go ahead and transport over to the shrine nearest the temple. So that's going to be the Yuko Shrine, the first shrine that we visited. Now if we look right here to the left, that's the Temple of Time. It's a pretty easy way to get back there. Let me just go ahead and jump off of this platform into the water and uh, we'll ascend up near the Temple of Time. I don't know about you, but I think Link is very well equipped at this point to head down to the surface and explore Hyrule. So let's use recall on these gears again and give this door another try, see if we can open it. Now this goddess statue is glowing, so I think it's a good time to talk to it and we're gonna trade in these Light of Blessings for an extra heart container. Nice. Now we should definitely be able to open this door. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> Link does his little stretch. He's like, all right, let's do this. All right, I'm going to press A and hold it. Got it with a quarter of a heart to spare. Now the world is opening up to us. Look at that sunset back there. Man, that is so dope. Got a cutscene right here. Ah, oh, good. I see you have managed to open the door. You haven't fully recovered yet, but that is to be expected. We're almost beyond saving. By visiting the shrines and receiving their blessings, you have mitigated some of the corruption's effects. Though our time together has been brief, I am so happy that we finally met. That's awesome. Look how majestic he is, man. You are exactly He's awesome. Zelda said. I've done everything I can for her. Now it is up to you. And just like that, he just vanishes. So let's go over to that platform ahead because there's something there waiting for us. All right, we'll use ascend here, get to the top. And we'll do that again here. And we'll use ascend here again. We've got this like glowing orb ahead. So let's go ahead and examine that.
All right, so the Master Sword is glowing again. I wonder why. Recall back on the sword. So now it's in Zelda's hands. What the heck? Interesting. <laughs> what is this coming out of the cloud? Oh, that is so dope. So that is a dragon called Nadra. Super majestic. of Hyrule is revealing itself from below through the clouds. Link. Link. You must find me. Wow. That is super cool. So that wraps everything up for this video, YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. I am super excited to continue this walkthrough. I hope you enjoyed this video. We've gone through a lot. It's super jam packed, but uh, I'll see you on the next video. In the meantime, may God bless everyone. I love you all and make sure to comment, like, and subscribe and also share the video too, if you found it useful. So have a great day and I'll see you on the next video.